So, thank you very much, and uh, now we have a chance to, to look back for the first 10 years of e-governance academy, and I have honor to, to introduce here two uh, key persons from e-governance academy, Mr. Rivartallo on the left, and Mr. Arvoit on the right, and they will do a short overview of what, was, what actually happens during the last 10 years. Yeah, yes. Thank you. That's what we are going to do. So, um, as it has been already told, uh, so it is a 10 years of e-governance academy. So, let me start with a personal reflection uh, um, uh, and honoring uh, Mr. President. He actually doesn't know that yet, uh, really, um, as that he's a midwife, uh, in a way, of e-governance academy. And uh, how it came about was uh, we had the idea um, um, already over a year. We were talking with Arvo, we were talking with uh, people from UNDP, from uh, uh, Soros Foundation, and uh, uh, we all found that it was a very good idea. And uh, as uh, it happens with good ideas, if there is nobody really to drive it forward, uh, then it stays a good idea. But uh, 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 Thomas Henrik Ilves, at the time he was the head of the Social Democratic Party in Estonia, and uh, uh, well, uh, my colleague, uh, in a way, uh, because I was also from the party, and uh, he, uh, he told me that, uh, well, Ivar, you are way too theoretical. You have always all these theories, but you don't have any practical experience in life. And, uh, um, uh, so I thought that, okay, when I left, I was at the time working uh, uh, in this very house. I was a member of parliament, and uh, then when I left, I thought, okay, I need to prove, actually, to Thomas that I uh, can do, or that uh, the high theories have uh, validity in practice. So that was my sort of uh, motivation, one, one of the motivations that I actually took this uh, job and uh, started to develop it. Uh, so that was uh, more than uh, 10 years ago. And uh, what, what I'm happy to say now is that uh, one of the biggest concern usually is uh, the sustainability. And for us, uh, for our founders, uh, it was also this concern, okay, uh, what will happen First, we'll give you some money, but uh, then uh, when the money ends, uh, uh, what will happen? And uh, you can see now that, uh, well, nothing bad has happened. Rather, good things have happened. Uh, uh, Ega is 10 years old and kicking, and uh, uh, we hope to go on at least 10 more years. So, um, but uh, before Ega, of course, there was uh, uh, Estonian government, IT, and the uh, idea partly of EGA was because uh, uh, there were lots of talks at around that time about the e-governance, but uh, they, were, they had all these nice PowerPoints, but uh, the, uh, at the end there was an asterisk, uh, I mean, on what they were doing, uh, that, well, this program or this project starts January 1st next year. And then we were wondering, okay, but in Estonia we have done it already. It's, uh, I mean, we started to pay taxes online in 2000. We started mobile parking in 2000. Uh, there were, uh, we, we had the e-cabinet, the paperless office of, uh, uh, for the ministers in 2000. So uh, there was something. And the person who was uh, one of the key people in the government, uh, the one responsible for e-Estonia development uh, from early on was uh, Mr. Arvoit. So I'm very pleased to uh, introduce him here and uh, very happy that he has uh, taken over from me as active day-to-day -day management of EGA. So please, Arvo. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs> Actually, I was just continuing with, uh, we met Ivar somewhere in 1996, I think, and the, one of the reasons were, actually today is also 20 years from the starting of uh, the State Information System Department, which was in State Chancellery at the time. But I met Ivar because the uh, government was not happy that how you can work with us good strategies. And I was just asking Ivar maybe you can help to just put down strategies. But then, now we're just entering already some of the discussions about what is important and what's less important. But, but uh, 20 years ago, it was started also uh, Europe, big programs. 
and uh, Martin Pangeman was one of the creators of those. And uh, those uh, times, uh, he thought that Estonia might be a brilliant example, as Estonia is pretty small, and it seems that we, we try to make uh, new things here fast. So it, it was 20 years ago. So it's in some sense that uh, it, it's not only e-government academia and, uh, and most of the uh, nice uh, IT systems in Estonia, but even a uh, longer period. Yes, and uh, so uh, we have uh, now spread the word around in the world. I tried to put some of it on the map uh, just to see um, uh, those countries' colors have something to do, well, uh, something more uh, to do with the governance academy. Uh, with some countries mainly advice and training, with some countries more uh, on the way of cooperation. Uh, probably some countries are out. Uh, we try to actually uh, put an exact number together. We uh, sort of were confused in around 50 countries. So uh, I guess it is a couple of uh, uh, more than 50. Johannes thought it was a couple of less than 50, but uh, the truth is somewhere, uh, somewhere there. Uh, but what is interesting is that uh, when initially the Estonian experience was uh, talked about and discussed, uh, the UNDP, the OSI, uh, they suggested that, well, uh, you, as, you as a former Soviet country, as the president said, so uh, you could teach the other former Soviet countries. So that was our initial task uh, from the uh, funders that uh, we should engage the former Soviet republics to show them how we progress. And uh, after this funding ended, actually, we were uh, going further uh, afield, first to the small countries, then to the bigger countries. Actually, the very big countries came to us themselves. Uh, I was uh, rather surprised and very happy at the end uh, uh, when Indians started to take interest. And uh, uh, now there are, we have regular groups from uh, Indian federal uh, governments, from provinces uh, coming to us uh, to learn. And when uh, we think, okay, how can somebody as small as Estonia with uh, 1.3 million people learn uh, something to such a big country with over a billion people. Then uh, the answer from Indians is very clear. Look, uh, yes, we have a very complicated systems and problems, but uh, we can see sort of the essence of the e-governance uh, transformation in Estonia. And that's why they are interested. And finally, uh, to, the, uh, to the world map. Uh, it is interesting, uh, uh, and the uh, president uh, mentioned it also, now we are taken seriously, finally, by the Western Europe and North America as well. It was a very hard battle. Even a um, couple of years ago, uh, the Western countries were, okay, yes, uh, you talk to the third world, you talk to the others, uh, don't talk to us. I mean, well, okay, it's interesting to listen to you, but uh, there is nothing to learn. But now... Uh, uh, Estonian uh, Ministry of uh, Economy and Communication has uh, uh, has cooperation agreement with Great Britain and they, they are doing, helping uh, jo uh, f uh, joining forces with Finland and, uh, and uh, there are lots of interest in America. So it is really growing and uh, qualitatively becoming better. So uh, uh, one more th slide uh, from the early days. Uh, there is our mission statement. And I will read it. Uh, it's to train and advise leaders and stakeholders in using ICTs to increase government efficiency and to improve democratic processes with the aim of building open information societies. That is 10 years old. We are still following it. And uh, uh, I remember how hard it was uh, to work on it, but it, I think, was uh, quite worth it. Uh, we have been technology neutral. So, uh, but we are never uh, sort of had any problems so with uh, promoting Microsoft when Microsoft has done good things uh, or with any other uh, technologies as such. Yes, we uh, advise governments not to be uh, technology dependent or vendor dependent uh, uh, because uh, that uh, the government should not be. But uh, uh, both open source, uh, proprietary, all these different things are actually good. So, Arvo, uh, do you want to explain the circles? Uh? Okay, you can read here also, but uh, of course we are doing different things and uh, starting training and 
uh, already we calculated it's uh, more than 2,500 uh, people have been here or we have been uh, just in Dutch in different countries, uh, which is a pretty nice number already and uh, close to 50 countries. But it, uh, what we didn't uh, made very much is uh, research. So it was several reasons why we're not uh, focusing uh, very much on research side, but I think that we will just uh, we'll talk see about the future, the future. Right. future. Exactly. Uh, but if I can just make a next slide. Just one second. One thing I wanted to say about the transfer of knowledge. I think this is really crucial. The way you do the transfer of knowledge, when the knowledge is not yet codified, when the knowledge is just created, I think that is. Uh, uh, sort of say uh, uh, what Ega has uh, a very good knowledge of. Uh, we are uh, uh, using people who are uh, really creating things and uh, then transferring this without the books. But yes, we need to start writing books. Uh, so the next slide, please. Okay, it's just uh, now it's maybe we are start starting with some jokes. So we uh, Anna's already mentioned that uh, sometimes we are looking to this picture like uh, there are two types of uh, people. One are Democrats and second are uh, uh, technologists or technocrats. And uh, if you look to this big picture, it's, uh, we can also divide into this e-government, which is more like uh, technocrats and electronic services, uh, e-administration, document management system, all, all those things. And from other side, the democracy or e-democrats with the participation and the voting. And my ex as a personal experience from the history was that when I came to government or in 1993, I thought that I mo more or less know everything because I just know approximate what the program I was programmer before. And I know what are the d uh, databases and IT systems. And what I learned during uh, 10 years and now 10 to 20 years is uh, that it's not about technology. It's maybe technology is about 20% and all others are 80%. And this is something that uh, my understanding of, uh, for the field uh, was uh, changing and uh, what the uh, e-governance academy is uh, telling to all the people around that uh, not think too much about technology because technology you can build, but uh, what you are not able to build easily, it's uh, organizations, it's legislation, it's everything around. And so even I'm just, my background is uh, technocratic uh, and, and some period also bureaucratic <laughs> during uh, work in the government. But, but now I just also move a little bit to the direction of a democracy or a democratic side. And, and yes, and we have uh, several programs in e-governance academy starting from uh, central government IT or e-government in central government, e-government in local government, which is becoming more and more popular and important. Uh, E-democracy participation, which is of course uh, one of the big field uh, everybody is looking for. Uh, cyber security, uh, growing field, many countries are asking and looking how Estonia is doing in, uh, in cyber security side. Uh, so many, many different aspects which uh, has been important and valuable and uh, mainly valuable also not only for technology guys, but uh, for top managers of, uh, of countries. And uh, let me just add one uh, little touch of uh, uh, rather unknown things. Uh, uh, the beginning of e-democracy program uh, in e-governance academy, I actually, uh, this was instituted in 2004 and I actually um, uh, took a risk and went against the wishes of uh, uh, the supervisory board. Well, they didn't fire me, thanks uh, for that. But uh, it was, uh, at that time, it wasn't yet topic in the world. So, um, uh, and uh, when, <coughs> when I told about the plans to introduce uh, e-democracy and uh, uh, I had a very good chance and I, I'm very happy we have uh, the program director for e-democracy, uh, Leah Hanni, is, uh, has been doing really wonderful uh, uh, work all these years. And, uh, uh, and she's going to speak later on on this uh, Democrats and, uh, and Technologies debate. But uh, uh, it was uh, the question the supervisor report uh, told me, look, but we told you that uh, you have to use the money uh, to train people. And uh, uh, so you are taking the money, relocating it for e-democracy. Well, 
I, I felt vindicated in 2009 when Estonian government actually instituted an e-democracy two-year uh, program. Um, unfortunately, it ended and now we are again struggling with this a little bit, but I'm sure we are going... Uh, Only a small comment at the end. I would say what, what we learned also is that in some countries it's a little bit dangerous to say that we are dealing with e-democracy. <laughs> <laughs> then we are using the terminology slightly differently. So, but the content is basically the same. Yes, but uh, it is not only that we are uh, teaching others, we are learning uh, because all this information exchange is actually a two-way street. And one thing what we want to do more uh, in the coming years also is to uh, get the feedback to Estonian government because uh, for a while Estonian government has been rather sort of uh, self-satisfied. Okay, we've done all this and uh, the other countries don't have it. But the other countries have other things, really wonderful things. And our country should learn from that also and I hope we have more role in this. Yes, and uh, really just we have different interesting examples and even sometimes people think that no, no, no. It, Estonia, no, no other country can be so good uh, as Estonia, and we are, of course, proud of that, but uh, we learned from uh, pre pretty different countries uh, s things which uh, are not yet implemented in Estonia or just uh, where you can just learn and, uh, and uh, transfer the knowledge. Uh, one of the interesting countries has been uh, Kazakhstan, where they are just uh, looking to this uh, uh, quality of the services in uh, local uh, government level and uh, they are using very efficiently uh, e-tools. So really just we can learn uh, in many, very many different countries. Okay, but uh, what can other countries learn from Estonia? I mean, one of the things is this kind of conceptual framework. Uh, uh, this what we call uh, e-government infrastructure. It has uh, basically four major elements. Uh, it's uh, access, it's, uh, everybody has it already around the world. Well, some countries, uh, notably in Africa, are still uh, struggling somewhat, but uh, it's coming. Then it is a digitized information. Again, the developed world has it, uh, the others maybe uh, not yet. Uh, then it is a formalized exchange and there where Estonia has one of the strengths with X road and then finally what is very important and uh, I think what uh, we have learned ourselves is growing importance is uh, digital uh, identity and actually the role of government that uh, uh, our president was speaking about I think is changing in a way that uh, in traditional uh, understanding of government government was the entity that controlled the territory I think in 21st century, government is going to be the sort of trusted third party giving out the final identity of people. Because yes, there can be companies doing it, uh, but uh, at the sort of or at the source will be the identity you as a citizen. That governments don't contract out to the private citizens. So, Ega's impact. Okay, just uh, very fastly. Uh, so uh, quite often when we are working outside, uh, the expectations are about impact. And uh, one thing what we learned from Estonia is that uh, trust building uh, takes time. So it means that even uh, when you are setting up some frameworks and systems, uh, the results uh, are not next month. And uh, here uh, I would say that uh, it takes, in case of Estonia, we saw that it took uh, four years or five years to just build trust uh, in the society. And it was not only the case with the government, but also in the private sector. So in the case of Estonia, I think that banking sector was just building very much this trust, uh, trust around the citizens to use electronic services. And to reflect a little bit on the uh, dilemmas of uh, donors and uh, supervisory boards, they were saying, okay, please show us the impact. Ega, what is it doing? Okay, it's, show, it's uh, training people, but what does it do? And uh, I, I remember I, I struggled a lot with this. And now we have this kind of anecdotal evidence, totally from out of blue. Uh, Tajikistan, I was uh, working on uh, some program a couple of years ago. Uh, well, they still have problems uh, in, uh, in all these aspects of, uh, of uh, uh, this uh, e-government infrastructure building. But then one uh, village, or not a village, a town, the mayor was really speaking very eloquently, very sort of, uh, um, I, I was impressed. And uh, then it turned out, oh, he, and he had done a lot of things. And then it turned out uh, he had been to e-governance academy training uh, some four or five years previously. 
Okay, second example is uh, from Myanmar. We just uh, recently uh, returned from Myanmar and uh, uh, it was asked that Estonians can advise what, how you, they can uh, develop the e-government and uh, systems. And when we are just were talking with these high ministers in Myanmar, uh, it appears that they were looking at Estonian web pages. Uh, they built all these awareness campaigns and trainings for IT managers from, uh, from uh, ministry and the uh, e-government secretary website where they were looking. So we have to take it very seriously to, to put a lot of information on, to our website, even we don't know, of course, who are just looking at it. But in Myanmar is seriously saying that the Estonia is an uh, example for them. Okay, and uh, uh, well, we have outlined a couple of uh, lessons learned, but uh, since we are kind of pressed, uh, pressed with time, so uh, we'll talk about it later uh, throughout, uh, throughout the day. So I'll uh, say that the uh, last slide and the last thoughts are about the next 10 years. So Arvo, please. Okay, so of course, we, uh, we have already a lot of nice contacts and Estonia is well known and the governance academy is also well known among very many countries. Uh, we are continuing to work in uh, several bigger countries like Ukraine in, in the oblast level, where a lot of municipalities are uh, participating in, in this work and I hope just also to implement uh, soon the six road concept in uh, Ukraine. We are working in uh, Moldova. Uh, already long time and uh, we have very good relations and good, good projects there. We have uh, many projects uh, around other countries uh, continuing in Tunisia uh, uh, also uh, hoping to continue in Myanmar for a longer period so uh, those, those are the countries uh, we, are, we are just uh, now in the process. And um, uh, one of the uh, like thematic areas that President uh, uh, called us to do, and I think uh, it is uh, long overdue. You know, uh, there is actually a book uh, written about Estonian e-government experience. Well, unfortunately, I, I don't know if any of us can read it uh, from here. Well, with the help of uh, Google Translate, probably, but it is in Japanese. We had uh, two Japanese researchers uh, staying in e-governance academy. They went back home and, uh, and wrote a book. Uh, we don't have a book in English, uh, unfortunately, yet, and we don't have this kind of, we have text, but not really this kind of conceptually sound uh, literature. And uh, uh, we need Estonian experience, this 10 uh, or 20, rather 20 years of development is a rich treasure trove. We started uh, already to provide complex e-services uh, 10 years ago, <coughs> almost 10 years ago, nine years ago. So uh, we have the data showing when people start uh, uh, to use uh, the services, what are the obstacles, what uh, can be uh, good and, uh, and uh, used by others un under what circumstances. But nobody's really using it. Uh, uh, we, we have been too busy teaching and uh, not doing the research. And plus, the research takes uh, resources. And uh, when you are just a startup, you have to prove yourself uh, that you are credible, that you can do things. I think we have proven that we are credible. So now we are calling up uh, uh, different organizations who are interested to work with us uh, and uh, develop uh, the research capacity, the Global Information Society Initiative uh, for eGovernance Academy. So that would be uh, all from us uh, right now. Yes, and, and uh, one uh, final comment very much uh, connected to this. Uh, we are at the moment also uh, together with Tallinn Technical University uh, trying to go a little bit more on uh, academic side also. Even our name is academic. We haven't done very much in academic. So uh, it's good combination uh, about studies and uh, training of young people in the universities as well. Yes, and uh, now I'd like just to give a, a short uh, remark and welcome uh, word for, to Mr. Tavi Kotka. We, you know, in Estonia, we are quite strange. Uh, we've been talking about the e-governance and uh, we haven't had a point man or a woman, for that matter, uh, for e-governance for quite a long time. And now we do have him. Uh, he is Estonian uh, new face of e-governance. Uh, uh, he is representing the organization that uh, actually was one of 
of the founders uh, next to the UNDP and uh, Open Society Institutes, the Ministry of Economy and Communication, uh, Mr. Undersecretary of uh, IT, uh, please, ICT, sorry, uh, you have the word.